We all have reasons for why we can't be prepared for challenges on the horizon. But if we can identify the issues that prevent us from starting and overcome them, would you? Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris, and on this channel, we discuss emergency preparedness, AKA prepping. Uh, I've done a lot of different surveys on my community tab on my channel, and I hear some of the recurring issues and I did a survey a few weeks ago that a lot of the community uh, contributed in. And there's a lot of recurring themes that I hear a lot of times when I do these studies and it really helps me understand. And I hope I can provide information that can help you be motivated to continue to move forward and not allow obstacles to prevent you from starting out being prepared. And some of the recurring things that come up are people are obviously overwhelmed with life. They're overwhelmed with knowing where to start there's obviously the fear of failure. There's limitations that we all face as individuals, whether that's health, time, finances, and all of these things, you know what? They present real obstacles. And I don't think anybody's looking for excuses why they can't prepare. But the reality is when we stop from preparing, when we have those obstacles that are in front of us, in front of us it inevitably will result in failure. And I purposely titled this video to draw in people to help understand what are the things that prevents us from uh, prepping? What are the things that hold us back? Why would we fail as a prepper? And for me, you know, I, I always look at the different obstacles and I try in my own personal life to make sure that I'm not allowing certain things to stop me from moving forward. I'll just share with you and I'll be open and honest. Um, you know, one of them is time and that's a constraint that I'm often you know, faced with. I run this YouTube channel. I've got another business that I have to keep going. And the other issue, and I say, I've, I'll be honest and open. This one, it's a little, you know, again, trying to be transparent with you. Uh, one of the challenges I face is a fear of failure. And when you put yourself out on YouTube and you begin to show people how to do certain things, you're always going to get the critics that are going to come out. And, uh, you know, it's honestly hard for me to even sit down and do these videos that I'm you know, I'm trying to release on Sunday where I try to be a little more casual. I don't have really a script per se. I just want to, you know, find a central theme that we're going to focus on this week and hopefully at the end of the week provide some motivation to keep you moving. And I'll be honest, it's easier for me to sit down and narrate a video, have kind of an intro, a conclusion, and I narrate the rest and we do a video with B-roll. And I enjoy the, doing those videos because I feel like they're informational. But when I do more of these type of videos where I'm being transparent and honest, a lot of times it's hard for me to even release these videos on Sunday because I find myself saying, well, should I really release this? Am I being, you know, just too casual? And again, I say all that because the fear of failure is, it's, it's a really tough one to face. And it's something I personally face. And, you know, one of the issues and I'll trans kind of, a, you know, segue into this. And the point of this week was, you know, we tried to present information in regards to gardening. And I brought this video up, this one in particular, because gardening has been a huge challenge for me. I read a lot of the feedback in the survey that I did, or rather the poll that I did at the beginning of the week, asking people what their experience with gardening, how far and how advanced they are with gardening. And look, gardening is one of those things, it's a real skill set that I believe is critical, but it can be so overwhelming. And I've heard different, you know, opinions within the prepper community that you're just wasting your time. That's not going to really provide any real source of sustenance. Uh, if there's a real true grid down situation, your neighbors are going to take it. And I've heard all the excuses. And a lot of times I find that those same people, the individuals that will often say, well, I've got a seed bank and if anything happens, I'll just throw some seeds in the ground. And I'll be good to go. For those of us that have actually put our hand into gardening and had any failures or successes, we know that it's not just simply seeds. It's a lot more than that. It's actually getting out and doing what needs to be done to actually learn the skill set, and that's hard. And I'll share my own journey. Uh, if you look at my channel, look at some of the early videos, I did one on square foot gardening, and I got the garden going, and you know things started kind of taking off, and they got stunted and it stopped and there was failure and I got frustrated and I tried it again, that failed. Then we moved to a piece of property that we lived on for a few years. We had uh, an area where I began to do, you know, put in large uh, raised bed gardens and those began to actually produce to a point and I was having some failures, but some produce and I ended up going crazy and uh, <laughs> planting a lot of 
um, I, I forget which one it was. It's a just type of herb, and I, I went out of control and just planted too much of it. It was more than we could ever actually uh, eat. And, uh, you know, again, I had some successes. I had some failures. And this time around, I would say for the first time, we actually had success this year. When we moved to this new suburban home a couple of years ago, it was about a year and a half ago, I actually put in a garden, and lo and behold, it failed. It, things uh, sprouted up, and then they just stopped. I tried to substitute a lot of the, you know, fillings of having good soil with going down to the store and trying to buy a lot of um, the miracle Grow. Things took off and then they stopped after a few months. Now this time around, my wife, she was able to really build a strategy before springtime came. She studied companion planting. She talked to local, uh, uh, you know, nurseries in the area where they had really solid soil. And I'm saying all this because I've had a journey of four to five years where we've had limited success, mostly failures, but this time around, it blew up out of control. I mean, I need to go out there and actually clean up the garden because things grew like weeds. And it was a mir it was just amazing. And it's so awesome to see that we didn't give up, that we didn't allow those obstacles to stop, but to stop us rather, but it took time. And so how do we overcome these obstacles and avoid failure? Because again, I'm just putting all that information out there. I shared my own journey. Because I've had people, you know, come in the comments sections like, oh, you've done so many videos on gardening, you failed, why would you talk to us about, you know, gardening? Because again, I'm trying to be transparent. I've had my own failures and I've had obstacles, but through it all, I'm glad I stuck with it. Now I can say that we've actually achieved, mostly my wife and all, you know, and again, she's done a phenomenal job. And so, you know, if you're in a position, and again, this week we talked about different gardening aspects. We had the video on in, uh, indoor gardening. I did a video talking about the different issues where the wealthy are buying up land. And, you know, we have decided to put several videos in our queue over the next several months where we're going to do more and more practical, like microgreens, uh, growing mushrooms, other things that you can actually start off and doing. And if you're starting out in this and you're, you may say, well, I don't even know where to start. You know, again, there's a lot of great material out there, but can you find somebody that knows how to garden? Do you know anybody in your community? Do you know someone in your family that's older? I'm saying all this to, to not, um, to hopefully motivate you to avoid allowing excuses or different obstacles from stopping you. So, you know, I always ask myself when I begin to look at these different things I wanna do, and I ask, what goal is it that I'm trying to accomplish? And I would encourage you to find something small that you can actually accomplish. And again, in the context of gardening, which we're covering this week, there's several different wintering, uh, you know, winter rather gardening approaches that you can use during even the winter where it may be cold outside. And again, I just mentioned those a second ago, microgreens, mushrooms, um, growing simple things on the windowsill. And we have in queue all, you know, different types of videos to address these, but you can actually buy mushroom starter kits on Amazon. They're not that expensive. And if you've never had success with gardening, start with something simple. Yeah, I find that in life, when you actually have accomplishments, that things begin to move forward, it gives you a sense of motivation that I can do this, and now let me try the next thing. And so I always, you know, I ask myself, you know, these type of questions, and I ask you, what are some small goals that you've been putting off? Because it's easy for me to get frustrated when I fell at large things, and so many times, it's just a little, you know, you've heard this term, baby steps, right? It's the little things that as you can grow and learn different skill sets over time, you will inevitably improve your skills, hopefully, if you continue at it, and you can move, in, move into the bigger things. And I say all this to encourage you, write down what you want to accomplish. Obviously, fall just started a few days ago. We're you know, gonna be going into winter within several months and spring will be here before you know it. And I would encourage you, during this time, make a plan Find some simple things that you can do now and go for it. Um, you know, <laughs> what's the old saying? Uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Sometimes I do these videos. I'll be honest, sometimes I'm trying to talk to myself and encourage myself, don't give up. You know, again, there's certain things that I want to do and I get so frustrated so many times. And I'm saying all this to hopefully encourage you that whatever it is you're going after, don't allow yourself to be held up by failures. And again, we all face this. Spring, like I mentioned, is a ways off, but what skills can you learn now for gardening? If it's just a matter of saying, you know what, over the next few months before springtime hits, and it will be here anytime soon, uh, you know, find a book that you can, uh, you know, sit down and read or a video. Again, I, you know, I have no ties to this book, but the uh, book, 
uh, you know, companion planting. There's, what is it called? Carrots Loves Tomatoes, uh, or Carrot Loves Tomatoes. I, I think it's on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description after I do this video. I'll go and, and find the exact title. But my wife, she got that book, and again, the concept of companion planting, it, it worked miracles for our garden. And so what are the reasons that we fell in prepping? You name them, and again, there's plenty of reasons. I, at the beginning of the video, I listed off a litany of different things that you could identify, say, yeah, these are real obstacles. And again, they're all real. But I ask you, what can you do now? What is the one thing that you can find to do now that you can tackle? Have you started on a two weeks uh, food emergency supply? I know a lot of people are coming into this community, some of the veterans on this, you know, that are watching this may say two weeks, what, you know, I'm way past that. If you are a veteran, if you're further down the road, I would encourage you to go down the comments section and find ways to provide some real information to, you know, based on your experience to help this community. And again, I'm asking you for a little feedback here on this video. I would love to get feedback from all of you, whether you're starting or whether you're further along. Have you started storing water seriously? Um, for me, I, again, just being transparent here, I built a water rack in the garage. You've probably seen at the, uh, several videos where I have nine water barrels stacked behind me. And I worked with someone that, you know, I trusted and at the end of the day when it was built, I knew that that was not gonna hold the water. Again, he kind of laid, he didn't even lay out the plan for me. He began to set it up. And again, it was my fault. I should have asked to sit down and look at the review of the plans. I, it was my failure, but it's frustrating because there was a lot of time and money and wood, you know, that we had to purchase. Uh, but I'm going to have to tear it down and start over. And I'm going to have to reconfigure my water storage setup. And that's something I'm going to be working on over the next few weeks. So what's another thing you could do? You know, have you ever take CERT training, C-E-R-T? Uh, that's something I took years ago, and I'll probably take it again here in the springtime or sometime soon. Uh, the information that I learned was phenomenal. And again, I'm just throwing some ideas out there. Obviously, you know your situation, but find something that you say, okay, this is one area I need to work on and I'll go for it this time around. Write down your goals and measurable, achievable goals. That's what I always try to encourage people when they're starting out or getting frustrated to sit down and reevaluate what they can work on. There's a book that I read years ago from Jim Collins. It's called Good to Great. And in the book, he talks about the flywheel effect. Sometimes it's that momentum that needs to be started and you start getting this momentum going and you find that it's not just one event, it can be multiple events of pushing that wheel that can start adding up. And it's been years uh, since I graduated college, but I had to take my fair share of physics, but there was a concept with kinetic energy and static friction that we studied. And I always remember overcoming the coefficient of static, uh, <laughs> I apologize, I'm probably butchering this, but I remember that there was, uh, in, in, in my studies, I remember that there was this point at which objects whether they're rubbing up against each other, they don't want to move. And sometimes you have to come in hard with that push to get it to move, to break that point of friction. And that sometimes we find ourselves pushing and pushing on something or trying to accomplish something. And sometimes we just give up and we walk away. But sometimes you have to come back in. And I find this in my own personal life is I have to say, you know what, I got to take a step back and I'm going to go for it again and I'm going to push hard this time. Uh, maybe that speaks to you or doesn't, but I know for me that has worked wonders when I've decided, you know what, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and push whatever that is in front of me and I'm going to do it. Um, and again, we're all, we all think differently and we all approach problems differently. And that's sometimes how I approach problems. I usually go big, uh, and sometimes it backfires on me, but all that to say more than, more often than not, it, it, it leads me down a path of success. And I ask you this, you know, what can you do today to overcome something that's holding you back? What is the one thing that you've always wanted to accomplish? And I would encourage you to share that below. Again, I always love to hear back from the community. And if you share something that you would like to work on, I would encourage those uh, that are further along down the path to feel free to go down below and provide feedback and encouragement. Again, I always enjoy hearing from the community. And as always, please stay safe out there.